want to give you four ways. Somebody shout four. Four ways to love your neighbor. But before I do, I want to invite a very, very, very dear friend of mine to join me in just a moment on this platform. He is my friend, but even if you don't know him, he's already your friend. We have had the blessing to be a part of the ministry to Romania for 15 plus years, give or take. And it has been a true joy, no matter what church I was in, to be able to connect, stay connected, and to hear and to receive the ministry of Rory and Melania Olson. And they are, if you don't know them, they are our missionaries full time to the nation, to the country of Romania and Eastern Europe. Would you give a warm welcome and applause for Pastor Roy as he makes his way with us today. Take my stuff. I never met a champion who said, oh, I'm a champion. How did it happen? It must be an accident. Never happens that way. You got to want it. You got to pay the price. And we're all called to be great. Four questions. Question number one. No other living organism asks these questions. You never heard a cow ask a question or a chicken or what do they say, dolphins talk. Well, I never heard them ask a question. Oh, the dog, yes, the dog. It had the leash in the mouth and the head cocked and he was asking the question by signals. Will you take me out for a walk? Uh -huh. Question number one, where do I come from? Origins. Question number two, where am I going? Destiny. Question number three, why am I here? Significance. I'd like to talk to you about question number three. Why am I here? And just so I can sum it up real, real good, even if your parents were not married, and even if you were a product of a rape or some violent thing, the fact that you are here, your life has significance. God has a plan, has a destiny, and you have a significance in your life. And in order to fulfill that, most of us have stuff inside of us we've never even unpacked. But God put it there. And I'd like to encourage you Amen. to unpack it. Uh, my, my name is Roy. My, my wife is over there. My Romanian-born wife is there. And she's going to come in a little bit. And I had four questions. I didn't ask the fourth one yet. That's coming. I arrived here at Kingdom Life. <laughs> Somebody, I, as I, I was sitting next to a gentleman last week in church here, and he turned to me and said, are you new here? He's, he's, he's been here since November, never saw me. So uh, we've been over in Romania, that's why he didn't see me. But I arrived here 20 years ago in 2001, uh, uh, the, the year of the World Trade Center. I arrived here, I'd been a pastor of a church. I'm saying this for them. I don't, you don't, you've never laid eyes on me. You don't know who I am, and I want to know who you are, but you know, there are a lot of you out there. Uh, anyway, my name is Roy. I was a pastor up in New York. I was Assemblies of God and pastor of the church for 20 years. And then stuff happened, and uh, my world fell apart. And I struggled with the four Ds, depression, despondency, despair, and defeat. Been there, done that. If, 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 if you haven't been there, I could never describe it to you. But if you've been there, I don't have to. <laughs> Just like that. And then I arrived here a broken man. 
And this church is some of you people. You wrap your arms around me figuratively or literally, and you just loved me and accepted me as though we were a community. And they helped me back on my feet. And in the process, they did mission trips. They went to Peru. And yo hablo español. Yo estudio español en la escuela dos años. Yo me llamo señor muy inteligente. And, <laughs> and I love that, dear saints, in one week, we prayed with 400 people to receive Jesus Christ. The fields are white unto harvest. I would have spent the rest of my life there. I loved it. But Montezuma got me. <laughs> I came back home and uh, back here. I live with my uh, sister and brother-in-law. They took me in. And uh, then we went to Romania. I didn't speak one word of Romanian. <clears throat> but uh, I had stopped preaching and teaching. And I just shut up. Be quiet. What's the next step? What is the Lord doing here? Uh, and I, I, I preached. I started preaching, and it was my turn. We were a couple of preachers. It's my turn. I preached at this church. And the, the pastor of the church, he said, he, he said to me, you're, you're three quarters born again Christian, and one quarter, we can't figure that out. So anyway, he invited me to come and work with him, and I did there. And that was a start of a whole new journey that after 60 years of age, and I've been there almost 20 years, now you know how old I am. At 60 years of age, I began the greatest ministry more than I ever dreamed possible. Why do I say this? Not to boast but to encourage some of you. You've been beaten up. You've been trodden down. You were rejected. You had a dream, and you've lost your dream. And I'm here to say it ain't over yet. This we know. We don't guess. We don't hope. We don't have to pray for it. This is something we know. We know that God, not the Supreme Court, not whoever's present, president at the time, but God works. Help me now. How many things? I can't hear you. All things together for good. And so I'm going to take you on that. There's no way that I could uh, tell you everything about what happened. <laughs> But I had to fasten my seatbelt because we were along for a ride. I felt like a surfboarder riding the crest of a wave that I didn't make. I was just along for the ride. And so this church, this ministry, sent us out. I would just say, this is, this is magnificent. Dare to be great. If you want to be mediocre, don't do anything. Just ride along with the crowd, but if you've got something inside of you, you got a little gumption, you got a vision, you got a passion, you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost, and God spoke to you, well, get ready for the ride. Because as pastors say, yeah, go, it's not a suggestion, it's a commandment. He doesn't say where, because it could be across the aisle, across the street or your neighbor. And so we're in Romania now. That <clears throat> pastor who said he couldn't figure me out, he invited me to work with him, and I accepted. <clears throat> and so now we're in Romania, and we call it Romania and beyond because God opened doors to be in these other nations in Romania. And uh, there's your pastor. Um, he was one of the first that ever came and ministered with us in Romania and pastored. And there he is. The other pictures are covered. But um, there he is ministering in Poland to people uh, over there. We've been there since I bought property there 16 years. 
uh, first time I went there, we helped to build this gypsy church. Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> I have a degree in physics and mathematics, and I was a senior pastor, and when I got there, they gave me a job. There was sand, gravel, cement, water, and I was the hoe that mixed it together. I love it. Get out of my despons. So we left that church behind us there, and part of my job was to take nails out of old lumber so we could use it again. And um, then in 2004, I knew that I knew that the next chapter in my life was in Romania. You can't go back to all the old chapters, you know, it's like a book. You got to move on from that chapter. Don't go back. You enjoyed that chapter, did you? Yes. Well, it's done. Move on. And so I bought this property. <laughs> There's a story behind that, but I'll spare you. Why are we there? <clears throat> There's always the, the, the question you want to ask is, why? Why? And the why is that we're there for the very reason Jesus died. Why did Jesus die? Well, that's why we live, for the same purpose he died. And it's in, encapsulated in John 3.16. We'll go back there. But Jesus Christ is alive. And in 2003, I had a vision. And I saw a channel like this for storm water, something like they have in California. And I saw people being carried along by this water surging down this concrete canal and they couldn't get up. The walls are too, uh, too steep and they, they, the, the force of the water just carried them along and they were crying out for help and just this nail scarred hand reached down and you and I are that nail scarred hand. You were reaching down for them. Talk about being a neighbor. There they are. We didn't, look at this young man and how many people and dear saints, I may be in Romania, but some of you have, have supported us generously all these years. I got to say, thank you. Thank you. You're part of the reward of whatever there might be. And uh, we didn't get them all. Some of them slipped by. But why are we there? We're there praying, uh, <laughs> claiming, believing. That's my sister. And those are the hills behind the property that we own. And this is my favorite prayer, favorite prayer spot. Uh, praying, claiming, believing. And how do we do this? Well, everybody does it different according to your gifts, your talents, what God has given you, and so on. How do we do this? Well, we do this by training other pastors. Every pastor you, you train, we don't train them in theology. They've been through four years of that stuff. But uh, we help them become more efficient and, and learn, lean harder on the leading and the prompting of the Holy Spirit to become more effective. There's our first conference that we did in 2005. I want to call your attention to this lovely young lady there. She was at our first conference. She had her eye on me. <laughs> and she's sitting right there. <clears throat> so this is what God opened up for us, you know. Just conference and people. This is a whole group from this assembly. And we work with Romanian leaders. We're not to fly by night, you know. We... we we respect the leadership that is there, and we work with them. And these are some of the great men of God. This man built the same first mega church in Romania, over 30 churches. This is the man who invited me. And um, this man, over 60 churches. This man uh, is a pioneer pastor and uh, a medical doctor. This medical doctor became my chauffeur and my translator. How about uh, God take you off the dunghill and put you amongst princes? That's what God has done. And, of course, we had special ministers. I don't know if you know these guys, but one, his name is Randy Wooden, and the other guy is 
uh, Bishop Thurman Collier, and they were there and part of the what 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 happened. And uh, so where are we? That is a Google uh, map of the village in which we live, and the uh, yellow squares are properties that we own. Uh, we own four and a half acres if you total them all up, and uh, we don't owe a dime. Everything that we do, we do as the Lord provides. We have no big firms that are standing behind us. We have you guys. And uh, we're, we're so grateful. And so we do camps and conferences, and they were crowded. This we call the Wooden Lodge, the Randy Wooden, Wooden Lodge. And we packed in here 72 people. They were on the stairway. They were up on the balcony, if you can see it there. There were engineers. There were pastors. There was our mayor there and a couple of those. And uh, they are the ones that are coming. And it was crowded, so we decided to build a new conference center. And we call it the, the Donald and Thea Spitz Conference Center because in honor of those who have stood with us all these years and we have other uh, honorable things. And there is the new conference center that some of you were over there and helped us to build this thing and so on. And then we had 40 kids, 40 kids at a conference at a camp for one week and the pastor, a pastor, from Lynch, Kentucky, said, I'll pay for the whole thing, get 40 kids together who can't afford to go to camp. And when he saw the response of those kids to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he says, next year time, I want 80 kids. I said, yeah. I didn't have any place for 80 kids. <laughs> but sometimes you say, yes, in faith. Eh? And so... <clears throat> I decided to build a pavilion. I didn't have the money, but I had the faith, so I put one post in the ground in faith. You need to put a post in the ground, saints. Take a step of obedience in the direction that God has called you to go. And so it took the first step, and then whoopee-doo, <laughs> ten posts. And... Uh, then as the Lord supplied, you know, we just built this thing. Where'd you get the plans to support this roof? I think I told you, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, uh, there they call it a, a pole barn. Well, I modified it and put two wings on it. And that is our, this my tractor. It's really a lawnmower. <laughs> but this is my tractor and there's you can see through it, you see the platform on the other end, and that's the cable tabernacle, Caleb Tabernacle. And what do we do with it? Well, we put, we put them in there. 115 kids. Yeah. And, and, and what I want to say to you is, dare to be great. Dare to be great. Take a step of faith. If you, if, you, if you live in fear, you're not going to do it. You're going to do the, the God of the pan. What was that? Uh, the pandemic. Pan, panic. Get rid of the pan. Go into the frying pan. <laughs> Get going. Dare to be great. It takes courage, dear saints. It takes faith. And then a team came over. Because I, I don't know why I had to build this, this cabin, we call it um, the cabina, the cabin. And so they came over and they put this thing together and we put a loft in it. And you see the window for the loft and so on there. And we called it the Joshua Cabana. And we didn't know what we were going to do with it until he showed up. Six foot four, 275 pounds. Don't mess with Bart. <laughs> he came, he visited us with his, with his family. I asked him why he's in Romania. He'd been in Romania for over a year. Bought property there and wasn't going anywhere. No doors were open for him. But when he told me his vision, it sounded like ours. Help, lift, encourage pastors and 
get the kids. So I asked him, I gave him my preaching assignments. He's good. He's good. He's almost as good as your pastor. And, and so right now, it used to be that every time we were in the United States, Appavia was closed down. No more. Bart is there. Don't mess with Bart. <laughs> He's moving things along. Thank God we call him an answer to prayer. And we also work with other missionaries. Sometimes missionaries stay with us for, when you've got a place, you can invite people. And pastors and missionaries have been staying with us sometimes for weeks or months on end. This is what I'd like to share with you uh, as, I, as I close down here. Evangelism in Romania. This is how we do personal evangelism. Group evangelism in Romania attracts a crowd, but there's very little fruit from it. It's one-on-one. -on -one. And I just uh, thought we'd have a little uh, fun together. Bible talks about eternity, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, eternal. That means they were never created. If somebody asks you who created God, they have the wrong concept, conception of who God is. God is eternal in past, present, and Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, well, what about human beings? Once 23 chromosomes from the father and 23 chromosomes of the mother come together, the spark of divine life is there. Life begins at conception, not at birth, at conception. And so, so dear saints, I, I guess you figured out I turned 80 this year. Don't I look good for <laughs> Yeah, I got fire in the belly. Just because there's snow on the roof don't mean there ain't no fire in the belly. Ah, sister. <laughs> yeah, this is your one shot to go around. You're not coming back again. This is not practice. This is not warm up. This is it. And what you're going to do, do it now. Like Nike says, just do it. And so who's going to tell them? Dear saints, God's not going to send angels to, to reap the harvest, he's sending you, you and me. And, and I just like to put this in parenthetically. Uh, shepherds don't make sheep. Sheep make sheep. He's the shepherd. Use the sheep. Go and get him. Go and get him. And so these are just some, some ideas. Build a relationship with people. Be respectful. Avoid arguments. Don't get into arguments. You know, if they're going to argue, they're not ready. If you keep the relationship, you'll get another chance. Be simple. You know, this, this thing about keep it simple, I don't use the last S because it's stupid. <laughs> and it's your interest in their life. Yeah, because this is the only way of salvation. The only way. You know, the three ways, no two ways. This is the only way. And so we use scriptures. And would you read this with me, please? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, here's the fourth question. I promised you. The fourth question is, if you were to die do you know you would go to heaven? Say that with me. If you were to die, do you know you would go to heaven? I asked that all the time. I went to my cardiologist last year, and I asked him, I said, if you were to die, you know you'd go to heaven. He said, uh, yes, I will. I said, how do you know that? He said, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I said, hi, brother. <laughs> this year they sent me to a nurse practitioner who works with him. And uh, I asked if you were to die, you know you'd go to heaven. I asked your boss that question. If I asked you that, what would you say? She said, I would. I said, hey, do you know? I know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. It happens all over the place. But generally people, when you ask them, if you were to die, do you know to go to heaven? Uh, some wise guy will say, yeah, I'm going to go to hell. I'm going to party with all my friends there, you know. That's uh, stupidity. 
and, and but most of them, most people say, uh, I hope so, I'm not sure, I'm trying. So if you ask them the question, what's the question? Help me now, if you were to... Okay, when you ask them that question, if they give you, I'm not sure, I hope so, or I'm trying, you lay John 3.16 on them. Lay it on them like a, like a slab of butter on a thick piece of bread. Lay it on them. And you tell them, God loves you. He doesn't hate you. He's not trying to punish you. He's not trying to get even with you. God so loved deeply, passionately, more than any human being can because human beings can't go where God goes. Tell them, God loves you. And he proved it by giving his only begotten son. What's his name? And they generally, they know the name. They, they gave them, the, whoever does one thing, I got the finger in the air for just one thing. Not five things, four things, three things, two things. One thing, just one thing. What is the one thing that they have to do? I, I tell them, I said, do you believe? Can you believe? Uh, who are you going to believe? Confucius? Muhammad? Uh, who, in who are you going to put your eternal trust? Can you put your trust in Jesus? Do you put your trust? If, if you do, two things happen. What's the first thing? Number one, whoever believes in him should not perish. Okay, you can tell him that. And then what's the second thing? Whoever believes in him. Whoever does what? And there says, do you believe in him? Do you believe in him? Then if I ask you the question, and I just might, if you were to die, would you go to heaven? If, if you believe in him, what would you say? Yeah, yes. If you don't say yes, I explain it to you one more time. And here we go. Oh, oh, uh, Brother Roy, you make it too easy. Well, I tell him this, number one, I didn't write that verse. And number two, I ask him, what would you like me to add to it to make it more difficult for people to come into the family of God? Yeah. And so uh, they're saying, you can do this. What would happen if every one of us at Kingdom Life here was doing this? We're going to go to another building program. You don't change the music ministry. They're... they're they're ready for 10,000 people. <laughs> Isn't that music ministry terrific? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know. It's the first time I ever sang through the, crowd, the, the cloud of his presence as it rose here. You can do this, dear saints. Just dare, dare, dare. You've never done it before? Well, stop praying to the Lord to stretch you. Because you will. And you get to do things you've never done before. And, you know, you just scatter the seed. Scatter the seed. Oh, they, they didn't accept it. It's okay. Just give them the seed. You never know if that seed won't germinate at a later time. And I got a story. Philippian jailer, Paul and Silas, in stocks, they pray, shaking going on. Uh, the jailer comes. He asks one question, just one question he asked, and he knew Paul and Silas knew the answer. He asks his one question. Can somebody tell me what question he asked? Just one thing. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And you know their answer came like a shot out of a gun. They didn't have to go to no deep theological textbook to find out the answer to that. They knew it on the tip of their tongue. They said, just do one thing, not five, not four, not three, not two, just one thing. What is that one thing that he told this man he had to do in order to be saved? What do you have to do? Just believe, just believe. Too simple? No, it's profound because it's a gift. Somebody else paid for it so you can get it. 
And this is the, the power of God unto salvation. The eunuch, you remember him, the chariot eunuch, and Philip goes over there, and the, uh, the eunuch comes to the question. He says, can I get baptized here? And, and um, Philip says, if you truly believe, watch this. Watch his confession of faith. And I ask you, can you say this? This is all he said. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Anybody here believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Well, you can be baptized. Because when Philip heard that, what did he do? He dunked him real good. Yeah. Okay. Just dare to do it. For it's by grace you are saved through faith. I got Bart there and his family. You see how tall he is compared to me. Through faith, through faith, believe in Jesus. Well, you got problems. We're not looking for perfection here. What we're looking for is belief. The fisherman, he says, get the fish in the boat before you clean it up. Get it in the boat. Do you believe? You're in the boat. And then uh, the rest is coming. So uh, the guy, one guy, he says, oh, I'm Mr. I can do it. And the other guy says, oh, no, you can't. It's a gift from God. <clears throat> Not of works, lest any man should boast. I met this guy. His name is Goody. Does anybody know his last name? Yes, Goody Two Shoes. And he says, oh, you got to teach people to be good. Well, I tell you the truth. You know, somebody's got to teach some of us to be good. You know, because there ain't nobody perfect. Except my wife. <laughs> and so what do you tell them, Mr. Goody Two-Shoes? You say, oh, shut up. You know, move on, you condemnation bearer. Just dare to be great, dare to believe. And here's all the list of God's uh, people. You know, Abraham, too old. Elijah, you know, struggled with depression. And uh, we know about Samson. We know about Rahab. We know about all the divorces of the Samaritan woman. And Noah wasn't a drunk. He just got drunk. You know, and, and that's the list of people that God uses. There's hope for us, dear saints. Okay, <clears throat> seed sowing. I was a pastor of a church, and the church was packed. I mean, it was a small church. It was originally designed for 60, and we modified it to get it at 135. We packed in 175 people into that little church. We had the pews against the wall, just one center aisle, and one guy came in. I sat on the platform in those days, and I knew my people. And so one young man, 22 years of age or so, comes walking in and he sits in the pew next to the wall. And people came in and they packed him in so he couldn't get out. And three hours later, after worship and praise and whatever, uh, he makes a beeline for the door. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I carry a lot of weight. And so I used my weightiness to plow through the crowd to get to the door before he did. And I said to him, if, here, here's, here's what I said to him. I said, if you were to die, do you know, go to heaven? He said, I don't know that. I said, come with me to my office. And so there's the crowd. And on one-on-one, -on -one, not the preacher. Well, in that case, it was me. Talked to him. And I, I had John 3.16. I, he sat here. I sat here. Here, I had the Bible open, half on his uh, knee, here, half on mine. And I, I, I gave him John 3.16. And I knew his name by now. Remember the name, Artie. I said, Artie, um, God loves you. He, 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 he's passionate about you. He knows every skeleton in your closet. He loves you. He says, got it. I said, that he gave his only begotten son. I said, do you know his name? Yeah, Jesus. I said, do you believe that he is the son of God? Yes. Do you believe that he died for sins? Yes. Do you believe he died for your sins? Yes. Do you believe that he rose again from the dead? He said, yes. I said, Artie, you're a believer. 
And two things happen to believers. You will not perish but have everlasting life. And the last man, let me ask you again, if you were to die, do you know you'd go to heaven? I could smell the wood burning. <laughs> he was grappling with this. And he says, well, I guess I will go to heaven because I'm a believer and I have everlasting life. I said, bingo, got it. 30 years later, my daughter goes to a dinner where Christian leaders were, and she's a leader, she's a music leader, amongst other things. And some pastor goes over to her. He says, is your father Roy Olson? She didn't deny me. She said, yes. <laughs> that pastor is a pastor of a congregation of five, 600 people. They're cooking, they're, they're moving, and they're grooving, and they're slipping, and they're sliding. Can anybody guess the name of that pastor? Do you know the name of the pastor? Let me hear, what is the name of the pastor? Artie. 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 You never know what your seed planting will bring. Sometimes you don't know what all about. And that's Artie. And that's me and Artie. We met uh, again after all those years. We met uh, again, me and Artie, Pastor Artie. Hallelujah. The grace of it. Here's his testimony. He said, 35 years I walked into a church in Pleasantville. This man next to me was preaching, and he walked up to me, and he stuck his finger in my face. I never do that, but that's the way he remembers it. And he asked me if I was saved. I wouldn't ask him that. I would ask him if he knew he was going to heaven. He says, I gave my life to Jesus that day and answered the call of God in my life. Thank you, Pastor Royals. <laughs> oh, that felt good. That felt good. Amen. Okay, it's not by works. It's on to good works. Yes, but uh, uh, I'm going to move quickly here because uh, uh, I, I, want, I want to uh, re just reaffirm this. Jesus paid it all. What do Christians believe? We believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He paid for my sin. He rose again from the dead, and he, Jesus is alive today. It's more about what you believe than how you behave. Behavior is important, but if you believe right, God, the Holy Spirit, will get on the job like he did for Artie. I didn't mentor him. I just planted the seed. And other people come in, mentor, and teach. That's what teachers are for. And Peter, on the great day of Pentecost, with strong voice in the crowd that was before him, he said, brothers, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall do this one thing, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, just call on him. You don't have to understand Isaiah 53 and all Leviticus and all that stuff. No, just call on his name and you shall be saved. And so here's the, here's the, here's the progression. You start off as a believer. Then you become a disciple. There's uh, stuff going on here. Then you know that your life has significance. And then you go and you do what God has called you to do. And the Judaizers will say, hey, teach them the Ten Commandments, teach them the Levitical uh, statutes, judgments, and all that stuff. And Paul says, uh-uh. I'm not ashamed of this gospel of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of that because that gospel, the simplicity and the power and the glory of that simple John 3.16 is the power of God unto salvation. So pray for the harvest. Let's do it. And our vision is this year to build homes for Christian widows. We have them. Dear, would you come please? Just let my wife uh, talk to you about that for a moment. Good morning. It's great pleasure to be with you again. Thanks, guys, for everyone. Thank you for your 
support your uh, help and we love you god bless you thank you very much <laughs> we have christian women who are living in abject poverty we could tell you the, the stories but they live in one or two rooms. We help them to buy wood so they stay warm in the winter and so on like that. We, we have the property. We would like to build this for them uh, so we can gradually take care of these precious people because the Bible promises a pure religion. Take care of the fatherless and the widows. And so here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That kid was so happy, he was crying. Thank you. Hey, Grandma. Thank you. Thank you. And can you hear the sound from heaven? Those of you who are giving your life to Jesus and you're being effective in ministry, wherever God has called you, thank you. And your, your missionaries to Romania and beyond, we say, Thank you very much, and thank you, Pastor. Come. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Roy. Don't go too far. You can sit over there, though. You can go sit. Go sit over there. I'm going to come get you in a minute.